very shortly. We'll find out. Here's the Instagram over here. Blag talk. Blag. <laughs> Blag. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. Hold on, friends. Hold on. We've got a guest. All righty. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on the MMA Holes Live, we got a guest. And it is Blair Tugman. Blair Tugman, what's going on? This is exciting. That Wow, you have a... Is that the Olympics behind you? What's going on there? <laughs> I'm in my parents' backyard, man. So uh, I'm down here training in New Jersey for the weekend and uh, figured I'd get outside and That's have freaking. a little piece of quiet so I could talk to you. I tell you what, out of all the guests that we've had on the MMA holes, this is probably the sickest setup here with the trees and the torch. I like this. <laughs> I like your style. Yes. <laughs> Blair, welcome to the show, man. This is exciting to have you on. I have a million different questions, but I want to start off with this. Conor McGregor's running around in a boxing ring right now, talking shit, about to fight Floyd Mayweather. Give me a brief thought on this whole circus scenario. I mean, uh, good for Conor. I mean, he's, uh, he, he's drawn a lot of attention to MMA, and I think he's doing a lot of great for the sport of MMA. Um, as far as the whole... McGregor Mayweather fight. Uh, anything can happen, man. He's got a puncher's chance. So I'm actually rooting for Connor and, and, and MMA myself. Uh, I know I like Floyd, and he, he's a phenomenal athlete and, and a stand up guy. But uh, me being an MMA background, I want the MMA guy to win. So um, I, I would like to see Connor get it done. We are live with Blair Tugman on the MMA Holes, and uh, we're talking about Connor and Floyd real quick. I, I mean, I feel like it's one of them topics that you just can't avoid. It's just like it's everywhere. I know I got my pictures over here, and everyone's like, yeah. But, I mean, no matter where you look, this is there. It's insane. Do you feel that this is good for both sports, MMA and boxing? I think it's great. I think it's drawn a lot of attention to both sports. Uh I will say that it, if Mayweather loses, I think it hurts boxing a hell of a lot more than it hurts MMA. May if Connor loses. So, uh, as an MMA fan, I, we have nothing to lose. Uh, just like my fight with AJ, you know, Connor's a big underdog going into this fight. He has nothing to lose. So, mm. I'm a big underdog going into the AJ McKee fight. I have nothing to lose. Um, Connor's highly confident, and uh, when guys are highly confident and believe in themselves, anything can happen. Now, here we go. Let's segue into it. Bellator 182. Blair Tugman's going down with AJ McKee. Now, you did say about this underdog thing. I am fascinated by this whole situation. Looking through the stats over here, for those of uh, you that aren't familiar with Bellator, um, let me tell you something. This guy, AJ McKee, is a dangerous man who only has one blemish, and it's in his amateur um, uh, career. So this guy is like, now, are you getting fed to the wolves here? Or like, what, what is going on with this fight here? <laughs> I think that's what Bellator is trying to do, but unfortunately they made a mistake uh, and they put me up against them. They, they, they're feeding the wrong guy to the wolf. Uh, um, he's, he's an unbelievably talented young kid, uh, 22. He's 8-0. Uh, like you said, he's unblemished. Um, I think he's a dynamic striker. He has a little bit of a wrestling background, um, but I have just as much, if not more, experience than AJ does. So, uh, And I fought just as tough guys as AJ. So uh, I, I don't feel I, I don't feel I'm the underdog. I know everybody on the outside looking in sees me as a huge underdog. But like I said, I'm highly confident in this fight and, and getting it done August 25th. Now, we were talking about this before you came on. You're on a three-fight win streak. You've been in Bellator before. So, I mean, you're, you're a seasoned veteran. You've been doing this for a long time. How, how long have you been uh, practicing mixed martial arts? So I started back in... Uh, 2007, I moved to Connecticut. I grew up in New Jersey. I moved to Connecticut back in 2007 and started training with my coach, Andrew Calandrelli, who's a Bell, uh, Bellator vet himself. Uh, he's fought multiple times for Bellator, and he owns a gym up there called Ultimate MMA uh, in North Haven, Connecticut. So I've been training with him for 10 years. I've been fighting for 10 years. I've wrestled my whole life. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey wrestling, started when I was nine years old. Uh, wrestled all through high school, went on to Division One. wrestled at Lock Haven University. Some of my teammates out Lock Haven have uh, gone on and, and fought and are currently fighting in the UFC. So I've been around phenomenal athletes my whole life and nothing new to me. It's just another competition. 
Um, I'm not making it any bigger than it is. AJ's just another opponent to me. Mm -hmm. So you feel the experience and everything like that. Do you still get those jitters when you step into the cage? I mean, anyone that says that they don't get a little bit of jittery, I, I feel is a liar. You always get those little uh, butterflies. Uh, that's just normal with competition, but nothing to where the point where it's going to affect me and what I do. Um, I, like I said, I'm excited for this opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. This kid's phenomenal. He's a superstar. Uh, and I have a, a huge opportunity in front of me in AJ McKee. And that's all I see it as. And I've been training my ass off and, and, and doing everything in my power to opportunity. And I plan on doing it in two weeks. So now this fight is right around the corner. It's actually a day before the whole Maymax situation. So you have to think that everyone is going to be hungry. There's going to be a lot of people watching this fight, a lot of eyes on this fight. Um, do you feel any added pressure with the big stage right now? Do you feel that this is like one of those fights that might get you over the hump? Maybe more people will recognize how good you really are? I don't feel any added pressure. I, I, honestly, I, I just, like I said, I, I feel it as another competition and a huge opportunity. I just see it as an opportunity. And uh, if anyone has pressure on him, it's AJ McKee. Uh, you know, he's supposed to beat up the old man. You know, um, and if he doesn't, then he looks bad. So I think he has all the pressure on him. Uh, I'm I'm loose. I feel great. It's the best training camp I've ever had. And that's on. So, Blair, we have a live chat that's going on right now, too. It's filled with aids over there. So that's going on now right now. So I'm going to pick from the live chat eventually. I just want to ask you a couple of questions, learn a little bit more about you. And then we can right. dabble with the, the insanity that's going on over here. Blair Tugman's yeah. live on the MMA holes. This is exciting news. Bellator 182 is going down. And uh, looking forward to this, man. Honestly, I was all overdosed on this Maymac thing. It's refreshing to see that this fight is happening because now I, it gives me something more to sink my teeth in, man. Honestly, boxing's cool and everything like that, but I think we're, we're ha we've had enough of the whole Maymac situation, and it's nice to see a, a fun fight a right around the corner. I mean, fighting a guy like AJ McKee, Blair Tugman on a three-fight win streak, it's like two guys about to collide. Do you have any predictions in this fight? Is there any th way that you're looking to finish this thing? Is it going to distance? Yeah, I definitely don't want to go to distance. I, I want to get in and out as quickly as possible and, and get my paycheck, but uh, I, I feel like I can stop this kid with inside two rounds, and I'm sure he feels he could stop me with inside you know, one to two rounds as well. So I, I don't see it going the distance. He, he lets it fly. He throws a lot of strikes. Uh, I'm going to push forward and press the action. And like you said, two guys are going to collide and uh, it's going to be fireworks, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Your last fight was a submission win, rear naked, naked choke. Now, was this the one where they took the picture where it looks like you are the incredible Hulk coming out? Is this, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> was, was that after that fight? Thanks, thanks for that compliment. I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> um, yeah, that that was that was the fight. I was all pumped up. I had just got done fighting Tom English, who's a tough guy. He's a vet. He's fought, uh, you know, UFC veterans before, and has never as wasn't finished by those guys. And uh, you know, being able to finish a guy like Tom was exciting for me. And fight win streak, winning five out of my last six. I was I was fired up. And, you know, here I am now getting this huge opportunity. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. And you, know, you see me submit AJ, you're going to see a hell of a lot worse than that picture. Let me tell you. <laughs> do, you do you have like a planned <laughs> celebration or anything like that? Or <laughs> I might be jumping up in the rafters after this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So now here's the thing. How, what do you walk around at? I mean, you fight at 145, correct? Yes. What's your correct. walk around weight? I can get up. I can get up to like 170, 175 if I really let it go. Um, but normally walking around, I can, I, probably around 170. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used to fight at 135, but that was miserable, so I couldn't. I couldn't do it anymore. Wow, 135. Yeah, that must have been a tough one. What, what was your that was your hardest cut? I'm assuming 135. I mean, how did you pull that off? Just starve yourself? It was horrible. Yeah, uh, two weeks of hell. Oh my god. Hell. So what do you go about? How, when do you start cutting weight before a fight? Well, I've been on a diet now for probably eight weeks. Uh, and I've got two more weeks of really leaning out. Uh, I've, I've pulled within close to 10 pounds uh, the, the previous week. 
Mm. So I'm right on pace right now. I feel good. I'm eating plenty of food, drinking plenty of water, uh, and, and feel really good in, in my training. So um, the next two weeks are going to suck, but I, I feel good about where I'm at. Now, Blair, has anyone ever told you that you have crazy eyes? Like, you have eyes that look like could murder somebody. Has anyone ever said that to you? <laughs> one of my best friends one of my best friends says it to me all the time. Exact words. You have crazy eyes. Justin Carbonella, if you're watching, you heard it. Holy shit. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, there's some people you can tell that can kick your ass. And I'm looking, you're looking at me right now, and I'm literally shitting my pants looking into your eyes, scaring the shit out of me. But you do have crazy eyes. I guess that's good for your profession if you think about it. Yeah, it is. But when you're walking around like normal society, <laughs> people are like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So have you ever had a stare down in the cage where you're just looking through them? Have you felt another fighter like, holy fuck, I'm going to get fucked up right now. Have you ever felt the fear in another fighter? I've never felt fear. I mean, I, I always try and stare through guys during weigh-ins and during the fight. And you can kind of sometimes tell... Uh, guy's mindset if they look away or they kind of look down and so I, I make it a point to kind of try and stare through my opponent and, and kind of see if if they're kind of doubting themselves at that point I noticed that sometimes I mean maybe I'm reading too much into this but anytime I watch the weigh-ins like if I pick for fights I love to watch the weigh-ins because I feel the story is told at the weigh-ins so you could get that vibe from someone just by standing across from them you could be like I think I have the advantage mentally yeah, I mean, I don't know how much weight you could hold to that. I mean, I don't know how much truth is to that. But, yeah, I, I definitely feel like you can sense these things sometimes from some, some guys. And some guys that kind of go overboard and act all crazy are the ones that are most scared. So, I, I you know, it's hard to tell. But I, I just try and just do my thing, stare at the guy and let him know, hey, we're going to be in a war tomorrow night. So I hope you're ready. We have Blair Tugman live on the MMA holes. It's exciting. Bellator 182 is going down. It's going to be a great fight. I mean, you're on the main card uh, fighting a guy that's... Do you think that this guy, AJ, is Bellator's little little uh, science experiment? Like, he's their guy right now? Do you feel this, that they're trying to push this guy? Oh, yeah. I mean, anyone who's watching Bellator knows they're trying to build AJ and Gallagher. Mm -hmm. um, and like I've been saying in previous interviews, if everything goes my way... On August 25th, I want a piece of Gallagher next. So oh, I can start being called the millennial bully, beating up the millennials. <laughs> I am <laughs> game for that, man. We met. I met Gallagher during uh, Bellator NYC. Uh, Luke Thomas th did a thing. I don't know if you're familiar with you, Luke Thomas, but we trolled the shit out of him. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Gallagher was there. Real nice kid. But I have to say, man, like you look like you're twice the size of Gallagher. Gallagher looks very small and frail. How long would Gallagher last in a fight against you? I think our styles are uh, pretty similar. I think he's the ground guy, so I, I think he'd be. I think he'd be in trouble. I mean, <laughs> he'd be on his back awfully quick and eating lots of elbows and punches. So I, I don't see him submitting me because I train with some of the best grapplers in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a great coach, Andrew Calandrelli, who's a top level black belt from Marcelo Garcia, and I go down to Marcelo Garcia's in Manhattan a lot and train with those guys. So I'm not scared of anybody on the ground, especially a kid like Gallagher. So he, I think he'd be in a lot of trouble. Have you, tra being from Jersey and everything like that, have you trained with a guy named Frankie Egger? <laughs> uh, that's why I'm down here right now. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I've been coming down every weekend uh, during this camp and, and going. I've been very lucky. Uh, I, I, I've known Frankie and Nick Catone. Uh, Nick Catone owns a gym down in uh, um, New Jersey here. And Frankie and a lot of his guys train out of that gym. A kid named Ricky uh, Bendejas, who just won Cage Fury's Bantamweight title there, a big regional promotion. I've been sparring with him. Uh, Nicholas Moda, who's on the Ultimate Fighter for Brazil. Uh, and, and Sean Sant uh, Santella. Frankie's here. Uh, Marlon Moraes. So I'm training with a bunch of high-level UFC uh, every weekend on top of whatever I do during the week at Andrews. So... Yeah, I mean, I do train with those guys regularly. So you're, you're, I'm not taking this lightly, man. This is this is my opportunity. I want I want to take this kid out. I mean, that list of people right there shows that you mean business right now. You're ta you're training with top dogs here. Frankie Edgar, 
Is this guy like a mythical creature? I mean, every time you think, ah, I think we're done with Frankie Edgar, he comes back and beats the shit out of somebody. What is his secret? Jersey tough, man. He's Jersey tough. <laughs> <laughs> they make him tough down here. The kids are freaking stud. <laughs> the guy's an animal. Um, I, I look up to him as a competitor. Uh, he's probably one of the toughest people I've ever seen inside the octagon, and he's going to go down a legend. And I'm just very lucky to, to, to be in a room with him and learn from him and be around some of his guys, uh, even if it's just for a weekend, you know, uh, just to be in that room and, and, and being in there with him is just an amazing opportunity for me to learn. So he's phenomenal. I, I can't wait to see him get after it for the title, uh, him and Max. It's going to be awesome. What, do you, what are your predictions? Him, Max, do you think he... Uh, he I got to go with a man from New Jersey. I mean, <laughs> uh, I got to go with Edgar. <laughs> Especially if he's watching, I'll get my ass kicked next week. If I, if I don't. Of course he's watching. The MMA holes, for God's sakes. <laughs> Blair Tugman. <laughs> we got Blair Tugman here on the MMA holes live. He's fighting Bellator 182 against some scrub AJ McKee. Uh, no one knows who that guy is, right? Who the fuck is that guy, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm excited about this. Now, what do you think about East Coast MMA? Do you feel that people are not giving the fighters from the East Coast enough credit that they deserve? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think the East Coast does really well. I, I think uh, New England is starting to get much more publicity. Uh, more, more and more guys are getting into bigger shows uh, uh, on UFC cards and things like that. So... Uh, to say that the East Coast doesn't get respect, I, I, um, I think I think where you're from, it, it all depends on what coaches you have and things like that. So I don't think to do with that. So okay, so now we're in Bellator. You've been fighting with Bellator for a while. I noticed a lot of fighters speak very highly about what Scott Coker's doing with this organization. It's very impressive how they're just. They're there, man. Bellator's here to stay. So now, let me ask you a question. What do you think, Bellator, UFC, do you feel that Bellator is competing with the UFC right now? Do you feel that they're on the same playing field? As far as viewers and numbers or as far as fighters and uh, things like that? Like, I, I think there's different ways to view it. As um, an organization. I think, I, as an actually, o I think we're right there with them, man. I think... I, I think Scott and Bellator have done a phenomenal job in marketing their organization and their company, bringing in top talent. They just brought in Sassy, they got Donald, so they're bringing in top guys from the UFC, bringing them in and putting on big shows at the Square Garden and things like that. So I think they've done par with the UFC. I just think that UFC has been embedded in our for for longer and it's going to take a little bit more time for bellator to catch up but i think they've closed the gap pretty quickly absolutely so i have one more question about this now everyone's always fascinated about this i feel this is a subject that people will be talking about forever and usada with the ufc steroids ufc a lot of controversy and this and that how is Bellator's drug testing policy? Is it similar to that USADA system, or is it a little more lenient? Do they check up on you guys a lot? Yeah, they they uh, they do urine urine analysis tests. I know that. Um, uh, I don't think it's as in depth as the USADA that the UFC does yet, but I think Bellator would possibly adopt that. Um, I can't speak for them, so I don't know, mm -hmm. but I know that I have been uh, tested via urine samples before blair tugman's live on the mma holes bellator 182 is going down august 25th it's going to be a bloodbath and blair tugman's going to jump on the cage and and rape the crowd i think <laughs> 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 do you have a lot of friends and family that are going to be at that fight yeah so i you know I, a lot of my friends and family are from new jersey and connecticut so it's a little bit of a hike for them but uh, uh there's uh, at least a busload of people going up to check it out. And I know a lot of people are going to stay home and watch it on spike. And uh, I, I have a lot of support. I'm very lucky to have so much support uh, behind me. And um, it, it should be a rocking crowd. It should be pretty good. How, how does it feel to fight on spike TV like that in front of that huge audience? I mean, is that just something, I mean, how, describe that feeling. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done it yet. So I'll let you well, know. Yeah, it's going to happen. 26, but <laughs> 
Um, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm just, like I said, it's an opportunity. I just continue to see this as an opportunity for myself, and I'm just going to go out, put on the best show I can, and perform uh, the best I know I can, and um, let the chips fall where they may. But I, like I said, I'm excited, man. I can't wait to get on TV and and let it fly. That's awesome. Do you have anything prepared after your victory, like a big victory speech or something like that? Uh, no, I don't think I have a victory speech. I think I'm going to go out and eat like two dozen cookies and some ice cream <laughs> and maybe a cheeseburger and wash it down with some pizza and soda. But that's, <laughs> um, other than that, no, I mean, I'm just going to thank everybody that's helped me get here and supported me and my sponsors and all that. I mean, that's, this, that's pretty much all I got. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now, Blair. Okay. The chat room is yelling at me right now. They're like, open the phone lines. Would you like to take a couple of calls and see what these kn knuckleheads would like to <laughs> well, say? All right. Let's, let's all right. <laughs> now, have you ever had the opportunity to speak to savages like these? I don't know. Have you ever been on a show opening up phone lines? No. Okay. First time. I warn you. Virgin. Right <laughs> all right. So <laughs> there is no screeners. God knows what's going to happen right now, but it's going to be interesting. Okay. If you're excited in the chat room, hit me with the ones. We're going to open up the phone lines right now. We're live with Blair Tugman fighting at Bellator 182. It's about to go down. It's right around the corner. So get your questions in. 516-522-0267. Get in on the calls. Okay. So yeah, get ready for this. We had um, a gentleman on from... Uh, God, Jackson Wink, young kid. He actually Matt the horror. He 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 got he just got signed with Bellator. He thinks he's Conor McGregor, and Jesus <laughs> Christ, this kid. Oh my God, what he was funny. Holy shit, they're calling like crazy. Hold on a second. Oh my God, you're alive with the MMA holes with Blair Tugman. What's your name and where are you from? Yeah, my name is Cross Canola, and I'm uh, Blair Tugman's my coach, my wrestling coach. Well, look at this. How about that? Cross, what's up, buddy? All right, Cross, you have anything to say to Blair? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Well, that wasn't bad, right? That wasn't bad. All right. We're going to open them back up. 516-522-0267. I don't know what just happened there, but there you go. So you, you're coaching as well. So I'm sure you have a... Yeah. Oh, shit. We had... Oh, hold on a second. You are live with the MMA Holes with Blair Tugman. What's your name and where are you from? Yeah, hey, this is Cross Canone again from Connecticut. Um, I'm a member of Blair's, uh, Blair's Wrestling Club. What's I'm up, also man? also an NCAA uh, runner-up this year. Blair's uh, brought me to the NCAA championship. I owe it all to Blair, and I want to wish him luck on the air. There you go. I also want to ask him a question. Okay, so he's wishing <laughs> you luck. He has a question. Here we go. Hello? Yes, what, what is the question? I'm going to ask him uh, how he thinks the fight will go. Will it be a submission, uh, knockout, or go, go the full three rounds? Okay, submission, knockout, go three rounds. Thank you for the call. Got to hang up on him. He's giving me AIDS. All right, so <laughs> submission, knockout, what do you say? I say TKO. We'll go something different. TKO, second round. All right, so you're predicting a finish. TKO, second round. That sounds good to yeah. me. All right, phone lines are back open, 516-522-0267. Here we go. You are live with the MMA Holes and Blair Tugman, Bellator 182, and this is the sixth man, Jay Smooth. What's going on, friends? Hey, uh, what, 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 what's good, Chris? It's good to be back, man. Uh, I have a question uh, for Bubba Ray Dudley, if you don't mind. Uh, <laughs> your, your nickname is The Bull Shark. Is it the bull shark because of the brand of testosterone you use? Because your eyes are open like my ex-girlfriend pussy, bro. I don't know what the fuck you want, but I wish I had me some of that shit, man. Crazy anyway, guys. you have a good one, and try not to get finished. All right. That All would right. be fucked up for you if you that, did. Yeah, no, that, would, that wouldn't that would be good. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Oh, my God. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh god i tell you what man i think the crazy hey listen now if you were a real estate agent and you had crazy eyes that'd be a problem but hey listen this is anyway <laughs> anything to say about that <laughs> all right we're just gonna forget about that <laughs> 516-522-0267 armed with the bull shark blair tugman speaking of the bull shark where'd you get your nickname well i was vacationing down in florida when i was a young kid and this thing started swimming up to me smashed it on the top of the head 
ended up being a bull shark, ripped it up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good story, though. Better than the it. original. <laughs> Oh, my, uh, I, I, my first uh, clothing manager, um, I had a fight, my first professional fight, never had a nickname. We decided to come up with some names. He shot some names at me and said, oh, you know, here's a few names. I, I like the bull shark. We went with the bull shark logo, and it's stuck ever since. So I still be better, but <laughs> it's not true. That story. <laughs> hey, listen, I would go with the first story. I think the first story is the way to go. <laughs> I was like, holy yeah, crap, that's, that's amazing. Definitely. <laughs> all right here we go you're alive with the mma holes in blair tugman what's your name where are you from hey brother man Uh oh this is the mvp of the show craig lee what's going on craig oh i am well brother thank you i'm here and uh i'm glad to have you i'm glad to see you're on with uh mr tugman there and they're giving him some shit huh tug job but anyway here's what i've got a few questions here but i'm gonna I'll sort of throw them into your mindset, and you decide which ones to ask him. First, I mean, I'm not wanting this ugly. Does he have a glass eye? Because it looks sort of staring straight, sort of. It's not necessarily <laughs> crazy. It's just like he's got a glass eye. I think he does, I mean, but he I might don't... not. Craig, he does not have a glass eye. I mean, listen. <laughs> All right, Blair, do you? <laughs> I only have one. Hey, look, I only have one eye that works, so I can bullshit. He's like yeah. saying nigga. Oh, I easy. Can say nigga <laughs> and glass eye. Listen, Craig, this is a family show, for God's sakes. Craig does have a glass eye, Blair. It's just to say he does have a glass eye. So if anyone could say you have a glass eye, it would be Craig. So anyway, it was a it was a, a gay sex experiment experiment that he lost his eye. <laughs> All right, Craig. What else? How you got? old is Blair, Chris? How old is Blair? I'm thirty-seven. Thirty-seven, 37 down, brother. You little old to be trying to get in the game. You ain't trying to get in the game. You just want to prove a point and then do something else like brick mason or something, right? <laughs> what the fuck? Brick mason? No, I'm all set with that. Oh, uh, Craig, do you have well, another... You ain't trying to use fighting as your career. I know that at 37. You can't do shit at 37. Craig Lee. I mean, I'm sure you're a badass and could kick my ass, but I've been fighting since I was nine years old You know, as far as tournaments go. All right. But I'll say this. You're a badass. I can see that. I'd hate to face you, man. You got that fucking crazy look. That's, that's going for you right now. <laughs> but beware. There's people sticking to butt rape you in this chat. No one's going to butt rape Blair in the chat, for God's sakes. He could kick all of our asses in one room, Craig. What are you talking about? Oh, right. I know he could in person. We ain't fighting him. He's catching shit on the... <laughs> <laughs> Have you not been looking at the chat? God, they've been roasting all right, his Craig. ass. What do you got? What's left, Craig? What's left? What's left? Do what, bud? Any other questions for Blair? Uh, yes, I do. And Blair, are you married? There's a couple more. That's a good question. Oh, I'm not. Oh, there we go. A single man there, Craig. You why? You have a proposal for him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I just I'm sort of I'm sort of putting two and two together. Mm. So hey, Blair. Hey, Blair. Can I ask you one more question, please, buddy? I, I'm sorry. I and I'll let you I go. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> go ahead, Craig. Okay. Uh, so, right, so you're you're 37. You're single. But, and now uh, there's two questions have you ever been married and if not do you like seeing young boys naked all right Craig, you, you, thank you. You. <laughs> all right thank you all right i had to get rid of him that was it enough anyway okay i don't know what you want to answer there but the floor is yours <laughs> no and no <laughs> oh fuck oh my god all right so you've never been married actually one question's good uh the marriage question uh 37 years old never been married so Okay, let's talk about something here, Blair. You are a mixed martial artist. You are fighting on Spike TV, Bellator MMA, big stage, main card. Are we getting some pussy that night or what? What's going on? <laughs> I'm not thinking about anything other than putting my fist through AJ's face. That's all, I, <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about right now. That, that'll come later. <laughs> how, how is it dating as a... A fighter, uh, a professional fighter. It's got to be tough, especially when you're going through training camps. You're putting your body through so much, and you're so focused. How is it to hold a relationship? Is it tough? Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, I, I, I broke up uh, recently with someone a few months back. Um, it's hard. Uh, it takes a lot of time away from things that other people want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm so focused on preparing and being in the gym and doing my thing that sometimes people are not uh, welcoming to that idea. So, uh, sometimes that makes hard, hard life to buddy. So, uh, I haven't, I, I it's not something that really concerns me, uh, at all. Um, 
like I said, I'm just focused on and fighting AJ. Um, I'm not concerned about dating or relationships or anything like that. So what is the game plan? Now, now Craig brings up another point that you're 37 years old. Uh, you've been in the game for a while now. What, what is the game plan? What are we looking to do? Are we looking to steal a strap in Bellator? Are you looking to even think maybe going to the UFC? What is the, what is the finish line for a Blair Tugman? I don't, I, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, I, like I said, the, the, the only thing that's in front of me right now is all I care about, and that's mm-hmm. AJ McKee. Um, after that, then I'll concern myself with what's next. But what's next for me right now is August 25th, AJ McKee in, inside three rounds. That's all I care about. We're live with Blair Tugman, 182 Bellator against AJ McKee. It's going to be a crazy fight. I'm telling you, man, both guys are on a a crash course for each other. Three-fight winning streak, possibly four for Blair over here. AJ McKee, guy doesn't know how to lose, so it's going to be crazy. We're going to take one more call, Blair, and hopefully it's not stupidity. (laughs) But we'll try one more, 516-522-0267. Be the last caller for Mr. Tugman. Uh, And I have to say... You've been a great sport, by the way. I mean, this was a lot of fun having you on here. I'd love to have you back. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's crazy. This, uh, yeah, this show is, it's, I don't know. I don't know what to say about the show. I don't know. But anyway, here we go. Last call here. All right. You're live with the MMA Holes Blair Tugman. Last call of the interview. What's on your mind? Where are you from? Hey, what, what's up, Chris? This is Walmart Nate. This is Walmart Nate. Oh, we have Walmart Nate Diaz on the line. What's going on? What's up, guys? I just want to wish good luck to Tugman. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. And um, I was just wondering if you can give any advice to those young fighters like me. That I want to, I'm trying to get into Bellator. Okay. How so can I do it? How can I go about it? That's a great question. And thank you, Walmart Nate. Well, well, how, well look at that. He's giving us a great question. All right. So Walmart Nate says, as a young fighter trying to get into the game, What's the best advice that you could give to that person? Yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome question. I mean, first and foremost, believe in yourself and believe in your coaches and, and your training partners. Um, surround yourself with people that have similar goals to yourself. If your goal is to be to be the best, then you, you need to find a coach and, and training partners that are going to push you to be your best. And I think sometimes that's a hard thing to find. Um, and I think sometimes people are, are fooled into – you know, thinking that they're with the right uh, group of people, but they're really not. Um, um, so, you know, just just getting out of your comfort zone, finding the best training partners, believing in yourself, finding people that are going to support you and truly care about you, and then just never, never listening to the naysayers, um, never listening to the people that are going to tell you you can't do it, uh, and, and just one hundred percent believe in yourself, and then. You have to you have to do it. You have to fully commit um, to, to, to get to that level. You have to give it everything you have. Um, and, and you're going to have to give up a lot of things. You're not going to be able to go out. You're not going to be able to party. You're not going to be able to go on vacations with your friends and do you know, certain things. So, um, And if you're willing to do that and, and sacrifice, uh, or should I say invest into your future uh, by training and just fully committing to, to, to being the best you can be, then – Good things are going to happen, man. Um, so uh, believe in yourself and just work your ass off, and I guarantee you'll get there. That's all. That's the best advice I can give you. That's actually great advice, and I think you helped him out. He's really looking to get into the game, so I think that, that definitely shed some light on the, uh, the subject. I got one more question. Do you have any regrets in life, like anything that you look back on that you could have changed? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just gave the young kid advice. I, I I, 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 I should have listened to that advice when I was a young kid because when I was a young kid and growing up, uh, I was very talented wrestler in, in high school and wrestled Division One in college. And while in college, uh, I didn't listen to that advice. And I did do some things that were not uh, good for my career as far as partying and hanging out with the wrong crowd and not doing the right things. And I think that was a detriment to – You know, my goals, Uh, my goal is to be a national champion in college and I never got there. Um, So, (laughs) yeah, I I regret I regret doing stupid shit when I was in college and partying too much. And and now that I've become older and into the game of MMA, I've completely changed my lifestyle. 
lifestyle and the way I live and on the way I handle myself and look at what's happening. Good things are happening now. Mm -hmm. I have this opportunity in front of me now and there's no freaking way I'm letting it slip. Uh, I worked too damn hard and changed my life for this and the October 25th, it's going to pay off. Well, there you go. I mean, you couldn't say it better than that. And I feel everything happens for a reason. You know, do you feel in, do you believe in fate? I do. I do. I think everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I've met people that I've met for a reason and I've been steered in certain directions for a reason. I'm back in New Jersey for this reason. Um, Andrew, my coach for a certain reason, I've been with him for 10 years. Everything's coming together right now. And it just feels like this is the moment, you know, this is the right moment. I just feel super excited for it. And I'm, like I said, I'm just happy to be here and have this opportunity and back on, you know, I've changed my life, you know, mm -hmm. whether I win or lose on August 25th, my life has changed for the better. So I've won already. It's awesome. Well, Blair, listen, I can talk to you forever. I mean, seriously, this was a lot of fun hanging out with you. I'm glad you came on. I do appreciate it. Uh, Blair Tugman is going to be fighting before Maymac, August 25th. Hold on a second. We got a donation before I... And you're going to need a fucking <laughs> Someone just put a donation in. Hold on. Walmart, Nate versus Blair. I love pussy. I love weed. I love Brianna and I love Ling. MMA holds rule. Chris, we will give you and Blair time to S U C K E L. <laughs> just to make sure you know, welcome new subs, sub if you are not. Okay. Thanks. I love life, pussy, weed, MMA, love <laughs> to all in chat. All right, thank you. All right, that was Craig Lee. He called in, and thank you for the donation right there. We have to, something has to pay the bills, right, Blair? Uh, anyway, Blair, listen, this was a lot of fun. I'd love to have you back after you win for sure, man, because I do feel you're going to win. You're going to shock the world. And uh, I just want to give you the stage right now. Uh, any sponsors, anyone you want to shout out, go for it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank all my family, my mom, dad, uh, Debbie and Jack, my two brothers, Brad and Blake. Uh, my coach, Andrew Calandrelli, all my teammates at Ultimate MMA, my sponsor, Jeff Hickok at Anthony Highways Auto, Auto Sales in Waynesburg, PA, David Esposito, uh, Milford Vascular Institute, um, Berg, uh, he, he's helping sponsor my uh, T-shirts, Brett Kerpa uh, designed my T-shirts for me, Team Tugman Wrestling, that's my wrestling club, the best damn wrestling club in the country. Um, uh, trying to think if I forgot anybody, man. I hope not. Oh, head sharp, head sharp, mental training for my wrestlers, Chris Noto, all you guys. And then last and certainly not least, I'm dedicating this win to a little guy named Raymond McCarthy Jr. They're here down in New Jersey. I'm going to see him tomorrow at 1 p.m. in St. Peter's Hospital. This young man is fighting for his life every day, day in and day out. I stay in touch with his father uh, all the time through Facebook, and his father gives me updates on him. And this kid gives me inspiration and makes me really emotional just thinking about it. But uh, this kid's in there fighting his, for his life every day. I'm just fighting for fun and for a paycheck. So uh, after I win this, it's, it's dedicated to little Ray uh, fighting there in St. Peter's Hospital. Man, oh, man. I mean, thank if you. If, if we weren't rooting for you before, we're rooting for you now. I mean, Jesus Christ. You're going to make me cry in my own show, for God's sakes. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, but listen, this was a great time. Blair, you're always welcome back. Do it for the East Coast. Do it for everything, man. Good luck, and uh, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you very much, man. All right. There is uh, Blair Tugman live in the MMA holes. Holy fuck. That was cool, man. That was cool. He was a good guy. Real good guy. Real good guy to root for. And I have a feeling it's going to be a fun fight to watch. If you check out over here, sure dog. There he is, Blair. Fucking ready. The bull shark. And he's fighting a gentleman that's, that's a formidable opponent in A.J. McKee. Bellator likes to push out these people. And A.J. McKee is one of those guys. So does Blair Tugman do the impossible and beat him? Well, it's not really impossible because if you think about it, the guy's on a th